Yeah, we're at the Bang Your Head Festival 2011, I, and I think I have a mixed interview right now. Even these guys look like brothers. Yeah, well, that's, that's Lammy. <laughs> and I'm Paul Stanley. <laughs> So please introduce yourself anyway. I'm Peter from Accept. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're Motorhead. <laughs> I'm Bobby Blitz from Overkill. Good to be yeah. here. So you're a fan of this band, I think. Oh. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we actually recently did a show in New York together, which yes, was fantastic. Uh, yeah. Really brought the house down. It was, uh, it was a great mix of uh, 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 two different bands that uh, appealed to one huge audience. Yeah. So it was really, uh, it was really a great night. So uh, we've known each other from that, and I've always been an Accept fan and big fan of Blood and Nations. And I, and I think I'll pass across it so many times over the years. You know, we've, yeah. we've been, you know, we're going back so, for so many years, and it's just once in a while you play a festival together, and it's, it's always good. And you know, Overkill is like that. That really true. You know, real true grit. I would call it true grit rock. I think metal. you share the same record company right now. Huh? Well, now that we're done kissing each other's ass, let's yeah. get down to the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you will go on stage. You were on stage. Yes. So, what do you enjoy more, these open air festivals or maybe uh, the the venues, uh, maybe bigger clubs or something like this? Uh, to be quite honest, I love you know I love the festivals because it's always like you get to talk to somebody, you meet people. Yeah. But yeah. usually, you know, it's wind in your face. People are far away. You know, <laughs> I I pre always prefer a, a gig indoor. Yeah. yeah really? I like to sweat. I like to you see people up close. You know, it's it's just a different thing, and and it doesn't make any difference. You know, we played Sweden Walk, and I don't know, oh, yeah. forty, fifty thousand. It's great, but yeah. the intimacy of of uh, you know, what we did in New York, it's just I mean, you feel it much more. Yeah, of course. it's just the way it is. Yeah. You know, I, I always I we have this kind of principle of business as usual, and that business as usual for us is having a dressing room in an indoor yeah. arena and smelling the sweat of the audience, yeah. that kind of a thing. <laughs> And my wife calls this the middle-aged boys club. You know, we, we go out, and we, we smoke Cuban cigars and roll dice and drink too much beer. It's more like a vacation at a festival because it's really a reunion, you know, yeah. uh, of people getting to see each other like Peter and myself. And, you know, I know the immortal guys and I met Legion to the Dam today. So, I mean, it's one of those positive yeah. networking type things and social things. But, you know, you give me a choice. I like to control the show. I like yeah. to I like to smell that audience. Yeah. So when you started with Overkill, was except um, um, an inf influence for your music? I suppose to uh, to a large degree. I mean, I I've always thought of except uh, as one of the premier European metal bands, if not one of the premier bands. Absolutely. You know, it was it was always uh, obviously above ground, but had an underground vibe to it. And I think that that was one of the things that we always tried to portray. There was bands that we latched onto, and and we used to do. Uh, 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 stuff off Breaker and and uh, and, uh, and Restless. And, uh, Restless we, and Wild, we did yeah. Restless and Wild. Fast uh, and the Start. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, and I, I'm kind of cut from that Udo yeah. way of doing things. So you know, it's it's really cool to see that what you put your faith in to in days like that in the past still has value today. Yeah. And the same with you know people who put their faith in a band like Overkill, it still has value after decades. Yeah. Uh, so I, it's one of the things that always kind of swells my heart is to be able to uh, look at an audience and see that we're playing to three generations of people out oh, there. Yeah. And that means value, that yeah. it was serious then and it's serious uh, at this moment, not just a, a passing fa fad yeah. or phase. Do you feel the same when you're on stage today? Sure, I do. I mean, you know, we're 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 so blessed, and, and coming back off. I mean, you know, after coming back after 15 years with a different singer, that's usually yeah. a, a kiss of death. And yeah. for <laughs> us, it was it was a shot of a shot of uh, vodka in the arm because, you know, our career just took off, and and we couldn't ask for more, you know. But it is true. I think there's an an internal value in in, in this. Uh, music style you know mm -hmm. it just doesn't go away your other stuff comes and goes but there's this so that's why lemmy is still around and you just got to go and see him and it's just the way it is metal fans all over this world are the best fans in the world there's, there's no doubt i mean yeah. there's nothing you know i know van halen has come back with a new album but in the states even you know they're very lame over there we noticed that and it's it's you come to europe and metal fans are really the rule yeah. south america the rule you know it's it's a they're different they're they're cut from a different cloth yeah for sure I remember that you recorded in a strange studio in North Germany. 
with your first records. So uh, did you expect when you started with the band that you get one of the most influenced heavy metal bands ever? You never expect anything. You just, back then, all you wanted to play, somebody gave us a chance, gave us some studio time. We had no clue. We had no oh. lyrics. We had no real songs. The producer oh, we, we got free have any clue too. Huh? No, we got free beer. I remember we had <laughs> the little German bottles, the little ones, <laughs> cases of it. It was like, drink. And we're like, this is heaven. <laughs> My father, my father. Uh, I was in university when Overkill started. My father uh, cornered me one day and said, "You're dropping out of the university to pursue Overkill." And I said, "Yes." He goes, "Are you sure this isn't about girls and free beer?" And I said, "No." And on his and on his 75th birthday, I took him to a great sporting event, and uh, a New York oh. sports star had given us tickets. He's an Overkill fan. Yeah. And my father hugged me and said, I knew this overkill thing would work out. And I said, Dad, I have a confession. When I dropped out of the university, it was about girls and free beer. <laughs> so maybe it was different in Germany because you were with a Krautrock label called Brain Records back then. Oh, and it, you know, it, it didn't. Back then, it really didn't. There was no, there was no labels. There wasn't even heavy metal. It wasn't, yeah, it didn't course, exist. Yeah, yeah. We were a rock, hard rock band. Yeah. You know, that all that stuff was created later, so it, labels didn't matter anything yeah, at that point. And look at our first record. I mean, it, there's stuff on there, you know, you shake your head. You're like, what were they thinking? And I think you were responsible for some great lead vocals back then, no? Yeah, I was. You know, that, that's because Udo couldn't sing any ballads. You know, I didn't want to do it. But <laughs> just to give, you an, to give you an idea, we went in the studio the first time. And the yeah. night, night before, we were going up there, we say to Udo, you get the lyrics there? What lyrics? <laughs> so what are you singing? For, for a year, we're playing these songs and... What are you singing? It's just gibberish. <laughs> so we had to take a dictionary. That's when you look at the lyrics. No. When you look at the lyrics at first, right? we on the way up on the van. We're like, what the hell? Are we gonna... no. And we wrote them. That is really? rock and roll. That is rock and roll. <laughs> and your rock and roll was Carl Kennedy, I think, or? Uh, Carl was our first uh, producer yeah. from the Rods. Uh, from the Rods. Yeah, yeah. cool band. Um, actually, back. Uh, yeah, the release, rock yeah. and we rock Carl. Them, yep. And. Um, You know, it was a good experience us working. We were kids. I mean, yeah. you know, it was. We didn't know what we were doing, and and I think that that was the beauty of it. And people will ask me, what's the difference between 1985 and 2011? I said, 85 was chaos. We didn't know, and there's a charm in chaos. Yeah. And 2011 is controlled chaos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know when to crack the whip and load the gun now. <laughs> Are you still in contact with uh, Michael Wagner? Michael lives in Nashville. No, no, really not. Uh, you know, it's a misconception sometimes that you think, you know, we all know each other really sure. well and we have phone yeah. numbers and, and when we're not playing, I'm going to call him and, hey, how are you yeah. doing? <laughs> Nobody does that because yeah. we're all very busy and once you're off, for instance, you don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah, you you course, got your yeah, own thing, yeah. you have a new record, you have a life, we have kids, we have kids in college, sure. you have no idea. So uh, <laughs> to answer the question, no. You okay. know. Yeah. And <clears throat> you're still uh, in contact with Carl Kennedy? Oh uh, no, I'm not. I, I just very much uh, like like Peter put it, it. It's it's great to get together these things. Yeah. And I, I saw Chris Tangredis who had done a record with us. He he pops into the festivals. We did a record with Wagner also based on your yeah. guys' results yeah. with him. And we um, we don't stay in touch. It's possible I run into yeah, him. Of course. But again, I mean, it's uh, you know we have businesses at home. I got a great wife and a great life there. Yeah. I love this because it's really it's. You know, when I when I think about life and being able to do what I've done for the amount of time, it, there's success just in saying I've lived it by my own rules. Yeah. And I see a lot of other guys who've done that also, and that becomes still inspiring to this yeah. day to run into guys that are living the dream. So I think that that's really what it's about. But we don't barbecue or uh, you know no. trade notes or <laughs> what strings are you using this time, Peter? <laughs> no, but one thing I can tell you, what always got me every festival I ever played in if, if Ronnie was there yeah uh, usually I don't you don't watch other bands because it's loud up there you got to get ready for your own thing you talk to people I'd rather sit talk to him back here than watch somebody you, just, you know yeah but as soon as I heard that voice come on I ran it doesn't matter well <laughs> every festival everybody runs to the stage and watches Ronnie it's magnetic yeah. you know it was yeah. it was such so that was one you know just to put that little thing in there because he was such an amazing singer and he was so way above all of us You know where he was, and now he is anyway. But uh, it, that was one of these moments where I said, I, "You have to see something. You gotta go see this. You never know." <laughs> and it's it's just amazing. So our life. I said the other day on stage, I said, "I got the best job in the world," and I mean it. And uh, a, a dear friend of mine from my old hometown wrote me on Facebook and said, "Man, I feel depressed." 
Because, you know, he, he struggled in a band. He never made it. I didn't, you know, I just said it because I felt that way. I said, we have the best job in the world. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing to it. You know, to be able to play your music and people love it. Come on. <laughs> we, we, had, we had a funny experience once because obviously many people will follow and stay yeah. fans for the amount of time that the band exists from the beginning to the end. But many people will come in and then leave, go on to other things. And Didi and I ran into a guy in Manhattan one day and he, the guy goes, holy shit, <coughs> Didi, Bernie and Bobby Blitz. You're not still in that band, are you? <laughs> and Didi says to him, how's your day job? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you do other things so I remember we played England and we met a guy when we started the band Wolf and me we did the, uh, the fan club yeah. I remember we, we made little cards and we put uh, you know, laminates and this guy was number one he was from England Guy Davis and they used to come to shows with cut out flying V's him and two friends <laughs> and we're in England and the guy comes to the sound check and I look at him and say oh, my name is Guy Davis Guy Davis, he's a, he's a day trader now. He yeah, makes a ton of money. But it was so no. funny, you know. After all these years, he still had these stars in his eyes. You're yeah. talking to me, and I'm like, it was, it was great. I'm thinking, I'll give you some chips there or something. And it's amazing. People stick around. But what is also amazing <clears throat> is that you look like brothers, and you share the same record company, which is maybe the biggest independent heavy metal company in the world. So you all were with major labels before. Would you uh, would you agree that major labels aren't important anymore? Well, it's it's, it's and obviously it's a different world than when the majors Absolutely, were involved. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and you know, I remember in '93 we were on Atlantic, and and Didi and I sat in a, in an office talking promotion with a man who was wearing a thousand dollar suit, yeah. and he excused himself to take a phone call, and I looked at Didi and said, "We're fucked." <laughs> <laughs> But. When you walk into the Nuclear Blast, everybody's got on a metal T-shirt. You know, there's a guy with an Accept shirt, yeah, a Dead yeah. Angel shirt, an Overkill shirt. You know that you're in the right spot. Absolutely. Uh, I think yeah, there's a great yeah. comfort knowing that you're handing over whatever you've worked on to people that actually enjoy and love yeah. that scene. Yeah. So I think that that's one of the main reasons that success has come to so many bands in this era of metal yeah. is that it's being promoted in many cases by those who love it not those who have to do it so it's yeah. a huge difference well back in the 80s too you we were all held hostage by these big corporations you know that was the only way and you had to get big you got a big record duty that was the way to start them that yeah. was the way to become rich that's the way to do it you know yeah. and you, you found out later that we're all fucked so now <laughs> Excuse me, but yeah, no, now you know, okay, no, yeah. it, it, all the guys and in, in, uh, the girls, everybody works at Nuclear Blast. They grow up with us. Yeah, they were accept fans first, and they were overkill fans. Now then, you know, in the record business, yeah. and that's actually what you want. That's that was the same with Andy Sneap, our producer. He was an accept fan. We yeah. never had a producer as a fan of the band. Yeah. Everything goes totally different. I mean, and that's amazing, and and that's the <clears> way <throat> that this scene has adjusted itself. Yeah, has given it new life and longer legs. Let's say. I agree. I think these were the perfect last words. You gotta so, cut that out, though. I like think. It's my <laughs> <laughs> Is that R-rated? Oh my God! So Beep. what? I think you both should agree on some <coughs> last words now. Some last words. Yeah. Where's German Lemmy? An American heavy metal last words. Well, we should uh, we should maybe uh, do a tour together next year. I would think that would probably be a great thing. I would think that would be a great thing. And We're you and me, we switch, and nobody ever knows who nobody is who. Knows. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll ask me for an interview thinking that I'm uh, you. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> All right. Okay, we are witness yeah. to the next Except Overkill Tour now. Thank you guys for this interview. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.